In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the essential nutrients and plant deficiencies if they're lacking those nutrients. Like humans, plants require proper nutrition for optimal growth. Plants are typically not selective in the nutrients that they take up through their roots, so anything there they will take up. Sometimes the growing media is lacking in a nutrient essential for the plant growth, and this causes a deficiency. Elements are taken up by the roots. If the roots are damaged from disease or insects, low oxygen, or high salt content, the plants can't take up the essential elements. Plants take mineral elements up in the form of ions, positively charged atoms, and anions, negatively charged atoms, which can be from the soil itself or from fertilizer that has been added to the soil. And here's a picture of a clay particle, which is negatively charged. Um, it binds the cations. And then we have a picture of cations in number two that are exchanged for hydrogen ions obtained from carbonic acid or from the plant itself. And then we also have mineral cations cations being released into the soil solution. Nutrient availability and pH. pH is a measure of the hydrogen ions found in the soil. Most nutrients are readily available to plants at a pH of in between 5.5 to 7. So that is within the neutral range. So what we see here is that within this range, we're uptaking a good amount of the nutrients that are available in the soil. So what makes an element essential? It's essential if you answer yes to any of these questions. Does the lack of the element make it impossible for the plant to reproduce? So there might be no flowering or fruiting. Can the deficiency of a symptom be prevented only by supplying that missing element? And is the element used directly in the nutrition of the plant, apart from other soil, physical, and chemical properties? So, what are the essential elements? There are roughly 16 essential elements for plants, and they have different effects on the plants if they are deficient in the soil. The macro elements are required in large amounts, while trace elements are required in small amounts. Plants will also take up other non-essential elements. So let's first cover the macronutrients, the ones that are needed in a large quantity. First up, nitrogen. Nitrogen is important for plant growth. It's found in organic matter and inorganic compounds. And it's taken up by the plant, and then it can be used to be transformed into amino acids, which are going to help build the proteins in the plant. The major ingredient of chlorophyll, which produces the green color of plants, is also due to that uptake of nitrogen. So it's very essential for the nitrogen to be in the soil for the plant to uptake it and for it to function correctly. So what happens if there's a nitrogen deficiency? Well, some of the symptoms will be lower leaves that turn yellow and fall off, uh, which is known as chlorosis. Um, they could be too little or stunted growth. There could be too much, which increases the growing period of the plant and delays the plant maturity. This increases the disease. Next up, phosphorus. This is important for reproductive related cell development in the early stages of a plant's life. It's required for root growth and for forming seeds. It's also required for photosynthetic processes, and it's needed in lesser amounts than nitrogen or potassium, but it's still essential. So what happens when there's a deficiency of phosphorus? Well, the symptoms include stunted growth and a deep green purple leaves, as you see in the picture. Phosphorus and iron levels in plants work opposite of each other. So high phosphorus means that there's low iron. Low phosphorus means that there's high iron. So when phosphorus is applied to soil, it is tightly held by the soil particle and it's very hard for the plant to take it up. So in artificial soils, 
phosphorus is often very low. Potassium. Important for growth, carbohydrate production, and nitrogen metabolism. We use the the element um, K symbol to represent potassium because P is for phosphorus. And it's taken up as a K plus ion. So a potassium, a positive ion. The symptoms will include older leaves that show marginal necrosis and the leaves turn yellow and eventually turn into a large mass of dead tissue. So that's what happens when it's deficient in that potassium. Secondary elements. So let's take a look at those. Calcium. The stiffness of a plant, like our bones, is due to calcium in the cell walls of the plants. So if it's deficient in calcium, some of the symptoms include that new growth fails to develop and dies, the buds and surrounding leaves die, root growth is restricted and appears short with blunted ends, and the end of the leaves appear curled over. Next up is magnesium, which element is Mg, that's what its symbol is. Magnesium is a vital part of the chlorophyll molecule with nitrogen. It's related to phosphorus metabolism and enzyme systems. The deficiency is linked to excess potassium in the soil, which is one of the reasons why um, having too much um, potassium in the soil can have a negative effect on the plant. Symptoms include intervenal, which means between the veins, chlorosis, uh, which is a uniform leaf yellowing, and then necrosis, where it would actually eventually die up that tissue. So in the picture, you see what adequate magnesium looks like, and then when there's low magnesium. So notice that yellow coloration. Sulfur. Well, sulfur is involved in the formation of the chlorophyll molecule. Symptoms include stunted growth, chlorosis, which is yellow leaves on the whole plant except the topmost leaves. Detection must be done through a mineral test of plant tissue because it appears so um, very similar to a, what nitrogen deficiency looks like. So um, looking at the picture, you might think that it's a nitrogen deficiency, but then if they do a mineral test of the plant, they would determine that it's actually low in sulfur. Next up, we're going to cover the trace elements. So these elements are important to a plant, but they are not needed in large quantities. There's just a small trace of it. Boron. What boron does is it aids in protein synthesis and it's related to the calcium and potassium metabolism for the plant. So a boron deficiency will cause a large number of auxiliary shoots at the terminal growing point. And so it ends up becoming what they call a witch's broom. So it's not going to be very effective at um, getting enough water up the plant when there's so many uh, shoots that are growing from that terminal growing point, that terminal bud. Chlorine. Chlorine is a trace element that's going to be um, involved in photosynthesis. Excess chlorine can happen when there's an over-application of fertilizer or there's a water contamination, but it's often more, that's more often an issue than it is to have too little of chlorine. Um, especially when people have pools, they could end up damaging their plants surrounding their pool because of the chlorine that they're putting in their pool. Um, excess chlorine symptoms include a scorching, which is a necrosis on the leaves, and then the dropping of those dead leaves. So this is too much of chlorine. Copper. And the element looks like CU on the periodic table. This aids in enzyme systems. It stabilizes the chlorophyll to increase the effective life of the leaves. Excess copper will cause tissue damage and the symptoms include that it looks like boron deficiency. 
So as you see, the more deficient, the less green and, and bright it is. Which means that um, typically the greener and brighter the leaf is, the more effective it is at doing photosynthesis because that means there's more chlorophyll, which is going to be um, the pigment allowing that cow's go saying that we use to remember the reactants and products. Another trace element is iron, and the symbol is Fe. Iron helps with respiration of plants and helps form chlorophyll molecules. And if there's a deficiency, it's linked to excess calcium in the soil. So again, there may be too much of an element in the soil and it could cause a deficiency then in a different uptake of another element. So it's not smart to, oh, this plant is low in calcium, I'm going to overwhelm it with calcium into the soil because um, it would then cause a deficiency later on in iron. The symptoms include that the youngest tissues develop intervenal chlorosis. So you're going to see that yellowing. The large veins remain green and the smaller ones will lose their color. The leaves may eventually turn white. So notice that you see these smaller leaves that are yellower in comparison to um, the bigger leaves, and then you could actually see some of them turning white at the edges. So remember, photosynthesis is um, done because of the chlorophyll in the plant. So the fact that it's losing that means that it's not going to be able to create as many sugars. Manganese, um, not to be confused with magnesium, even though they have a lot of the same letters. And it's, um, the chemical symbol is MN. An excess of manganese may cause iron deficiency. And the symptoms include that they appear much like iron deficiency with the finer networks of green veins. So you can see the green veins on the yellowish leaf. Molybdenum, oh, I had a hard time saying that, <laughs> M-O. Um, it's the smallest amount needed of any element for plants. And it's really hard for a plant to get in a pH under 6. It's used in the nitrogen cycle, which helps to form and break down the compounds. And the symptoms include a stunted growth, a failure of seeds to develop, a model leaf or chlorosis. Again, that's that yellowing and we see it cur curling up. And uh, we see that often on peach and citrus trees. Another trace element is zinc. It's very important for the development of hormones and enzymes. So plants can take in zinc from the leaves after a foliar spray and fungicides in addition to soil uptake. And the symptoms include a stunted growth or a failure of the seeds to develop, or again, that chlorosis where we see the yellowing of the leaves. So to determine the deficiency, if you notice, well, I've said chlorosis a lot. Um, that's the yellowing of the leaves. So that's a major symptom. Um, so when we see the yellowing of leaves, the first guess would be that there's a nitrogen issue. Um, and that's when you would look to see if the lower leaves are only uh, yellow. And then they eventually turn brown and die. Uh, if it's uniform, where it's yellow leaves everywhere, it could be due to sulfur. When the symptom is that intervenal chlorosis, which is the yellowing between the veins, if it's magnesium, it's the older leaves that will show the symptoms first. If it's iron, it's the new young leaves that are the most affected. And you could even see them almost white. If it's due to manganese, even in the smallest veins, it'll appear like lace. Copper, the young leaves are affected uh, and the tips may stay green and there'll be that rapid necrosis of the leaves. So it's gonna really deteriorate. And if it's zinc, the new leaves are very small 
and the growing tip ends up being like a rosette so it really um, gets tiny and curls in when the major symptom is not chlorosis so that yellowing it could be due to phosphorus where that's where we saw the purple leaves and the stunted growth it could be potassium where we have the leaf really curling up and dying, the leaf necrosis on the edges and the leaves dropping. It could be boron where the buds will die and there'll be that auxiliary growth that bends in the, mi in the middle. So you have this, um, this broom-like structure that gets really heavy for the plant. And if it's calcium, there's a new growth that fails to develop and die. The leaf edges curl under and the root growth is stunted. So how do you know if there's a problem? Well, in severe cases, you could take the tissue samples and um, of the plant and get them tested. Soil testing is the most common to determine what the soil needs are. And then from there, you could apply fertilizer or you can do other amendments. So you would base it on the soil test or the plant deficiency if you took a, a plant sample and got it tested. So this might not be something someone does for their little small home garden, but if you were growing on a large scale, this would obviously become a major issue. And here is where a lot of the resources came from in the making of this PowerPoint. Thank you for watching. This shows you the importance of other things to plants because we've already covered that plants need carbon dioxide and they need water and they need sunlight. Well, there's also other things that they need. And so those decomposers that are returning and recycling matter back into the soil, they're really important because even though some of the elements they only need in small amounts, it's still better than having none of them, you know? So we do need to get those elements. And if without them, plants don't function correctly, they're not being able to photosynthesize as well. Um, plants uh, fruiting is not always uh, growing and, and it could really affect the whole plant. So it's really important that decomposers return those essential nutrients into the soil.